Hey guys, I'm here with my good buddy, the Economic Ninja. What's up? And we're in a uh, kind of a creepy hotel. Very creepy, actually. It's the creepiest, they it's actually It's the most said. haunted hotel in the U.S. Yeah, I don't know why they want to brag about that, but well, yeah, it was pretty crazy last night. Yeah, we just rebuke that stuff and it's over. There you go. So, um, and a matter of fact, when we get done, I'll walk you around a little bit and show you. It's, it's, it's creepiness. Yeah. <laughs> but today... Oh. There's a really creepy photo to your right, just you know. I didn't even notice that yesterday. We'll show them later. Okay, I'll show you. That's later. creepy. So stick around to the end. We're we're in Tonopah. Yeah. And we're visiting these mines. We're actually about to go to Black Rock. Yeah. And we really get to see how the drills work and everything. I'm really pumped about that. And as we're here, we're talking to people that are somewhat like-minded, not all the way. And they're paying attention to, you know, mining and rocks and formations and stuff. But I have noticed they are not paying attention to the food crisis that we are in right now. So, you know, we try to talk about it and bring it up. Yep. And, um, I, I just did a video. I think I already beat you this morning to a video about this, but it's, he's got more information that I didn't have. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So there's 10 items that I was wanting to talk about, but I, probably five of them would be good enough. There's ones I had no idea about avocados. Yeah, no. Okay. You know, it's interesting. We had the avocado issue around the Super Bowl time where uh, we uh, stopped allowing imports. It was just for about 48 hours of avocados into our country. And that caused all this uproar. But what people don't realize is we produce a massive amount of avocados. As a matter of fact, in my county, I believe we're the largest uh, producer, California, of avocados in most of the world. And we ship them out. So we get the benefit of taking uh, tariffs and taxes on those, and then the same as those come in. So, wow. Yeah, not a lot of people understand Is how that works. Is the drought bothering that at all? Absolutely, and it's getting harder and harder for our local uh, avocado growers to get the water. Uh, they're having to punch wells deeper and deeper, so that's gonna be uh, an ongoing issue. Um, now, paper goods is the next one. Yep. Uh, I did a brother, I did a interview with my brother-in-law. I'll put a link right somewhere up here. It's really, you really need to listen to it because he's on the front end of this thing. He's a procurement for a, a paper company. Yeah. And what's happening is the fuel prices are getting so out of whack, they're charging the landowner the mm -hmm. fuel surcharge. Yes. Yep. So that, I didn't understand that. That doesn't really make sense to me. Why wouldn't it go to the consumer like everything else? You know, to be honest with you, the only reason I would think that that would happen is because it's immediate. They're they're getting it right away. But I don't know. I, I that blows me away. So too. I kind of think this is going to be a lag because yeah. people are not l wanting to log their land for nothing. Yeah, and they're not yeah. wanting to do that. So now we're not getting the logs. Yeah, and there's going to be like a lag, and then there's going to be a surge in prices because of supply and demand. And I wouldn't. Uh, I would imagine the government's going to step into some kind of price fixing, like they do on everything else. Some well, weirdo. That price fixing only lasts until it doesn't. I mean, it literally, it's very short term, uh, short lived. Because if they do price fixing and there's increased costs for manufacturers, manufacturers just close their doors. That's it. They go, we're going to go out of business. So they just shut their doors. They shut down operations. They do uh, temporary layoffs. All kinds of things. And it, it's a. Uh, it's just a spiral that gets bigger and bigger, and that's the problem. Whereas lumber is starting to collapse in value because right now all of the builders are starting to get scared because of the spike in interest rates and the immediate stopping of, uh, of new home purchases. I know several people that went belly up uh, the last time this happened. Yeah. And uh, we're not saying it's gonna happen in the paper goods area, but I know they've done it on chicken, yep. chicken on meat, yep. and uh, you know I wouldn't doubt it, and it'll be the evil paper producers that well, not only that, we're seeing plastic goods um, starting to shrink up right now because of the cost of energy uh, to make those plastic products. So where we're gonna see more shortages, uh, I, I covered in my video was uh, like dairy products and things like that, again, like 2020, because they simply are not gonna have the packaging available to be able to get those to the consumer. Okay, so your paper goods are going up. What can you do? You can buy the paper you need right now. Oh yeah. There's one other thing I'm gonna tell you to do, and this isn't financial advice, this is just advice. Buy your animals food and your chickens food right now. You need six months of chicken food. Yep. Just, you know, yep. if you've got chickens, you need to feed them. That's right. I, I'm relying on my chickens for the protein. If you can get a good source of protein and good fat, the other stuff, the carbs, you know, beans and rice, that stuff's cheap. Uh, and we've got this bird flu that Minnesota just came out with. Uh, yeah. They're, they're not selling any young chickens for a month. 
Yeah, and as a matter of fact, to buy young chickens all over the country now, you're having to fill out uh, forms because this is a very serious situation. The FDA is on top of this, the USDA. Um, there's a couple of government agencies that are starting to work on this right now. Yet again, you're not seeing this in the mainstream media. And so since you're hearing it here on this channel, you need to uh, do something with it and be prepared before the panic starts. So what's the solution? Uh, you know, incubator, if you've got chickens, you've got eggs. Yeah. Make sure you got a rooster, it's not gonna work. Yep. But you got, you know, you can incubate your own eggs. That's what we're gonna do this year. I'm not crazy about it because I don't have time. That's why I build my garden with plastic mulch and drip tape and timers and yep. all this other stuff because I, I, I'm just literally running out of time. But the more you can automate it, the, the more you get done. Yeah. Um, so you got your chicken food, you got your incubator, uh, and you've got good protein to get through whatever's coming. Yep. Um, you know, show I keep thinking of that creepy picture. All right, let's check it out. All right, we're gonna we're gonna show you the creepy picture. We're just gonna we're gonna show you the creepy. Oh, now is that not creepy? That's a creepy picture. <laughs> we're also blocking the uh, elevator. Yeah, we're blocking this the poor lady that needs to get into the elevator. So this place is really strange. I want to show them this baby grand. It's like the most beautiful baby grand I've ever seen. Oh yeah, go show them the grand. It's a creepy piano. Uh, Joe Brown was hammering down on it last night. Yeah, he was playing all kinds of uh, remixes. <laughs> Remix. Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby was played on this last night. It's Steinway, it sounds. This is actually what Joe Brown looked like yeah. <laughs> uh, the other night playing. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> pretty impressive. Well, looks like we better get going because I'm hungry and I need to get some more food in me before the food shortages start. Okay. All right, man. Y'all have an awesome day and get prepared. Don't be scared. That's right. I will see you tomorrow. Later. A wise man said that once. I'll see you tomorrow? No, be prepared. Not scared. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow.